Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. Today I'm gonna go on a rambly review of how horrible Theft's King video of Indigo Park is. To start off, I'm just gonna say that I'm gonna try to look at his review as neutrally as possible, but with experience with everybody's least favorite indie horror writing cash grab, it's gonna be hard not to. To begin this video, without even watching it, look at his description. He compares Indigo Park to Poppy Playtime, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, and even Garden of Ban Ban, which should go without saying is a horrible comparison. I mean, theft. When all you do is compare an indie horror game to more indie horror games, no doubt they're going to be similar. Game genres exist. They share similarities and motifs. That's what makes a genre. And with your type of content, when all you do is look at indie horror games and horrible, horrible cash grabs all day, no doubt you're going to be tired of it, dude. Indigo Park is the least original mascot horror game ever made. Between the tired, cliched premise of returning to an abandoned children's establishment, the enemy designs, the unnervingly cute mascot character, and multiple sequences that appear to be lifted directly from Poppy Playtime, you'd think that this was just another Garden of Banban-esque cash-in, and in a lot of ways, it kind of is. Unique Geese started his game dev journey with making a better version of Garden of Banban within a week. He got so much support and praise from the community inside and outside of his own fans, so he decided to work on his own passion project. So, instead of this horrible intro, I would start off by thanking Garden of Ban Ban for getting Unique Geese into game design and programming, but no, Theft can't even let people have fun and learn. For somebody with, with like, no programming experience, I'd say he blew it out of the water, but let's hear more about what this self-proclaimed leader of the FNAF community has to say about it. The game begins with a really slick cinematic depicting the establishment of Indigo Park alongside its founder, Isaac Indigo. Isaac Indigo? Hold on, that's not a, a name that humans have. Look guys, he's not even in the game and he's already found something negative to say about a character's name being unoriginal. He's one to talk about very uninspired and unoriginality when his name is Theft King. He calls himself Bargain Bin Matpat and his VTubers Catnap. Yeah, you're definitely one to talk about unoriginality. <laughs> and his animation is expressive and charming. He's the single best part of the game, but Rambly is also a crutch that Indigo Park leans far too heavily on, though we'll get there later. Did you just call Rambly a crutch? In some important parts of the game, Rambly isn't there purposefully to not be a crutch. If anything at all, Rambly isn't a crutch. He's a storytelling device, which makes sense since he's, you know, supposed to be a guide for the park. I mean, come on, please, think with some of your brain. Dude, I ain't got time for your bullshit! After completing a short tutorial segment, we're able to open the doors to the park and enter the Critter Corner, where we're given a Faz watch from FNAF Security Breach. It's useless. It's just a plot device to justify why some doors don't open until they need to. I was joking earlier about him not ever letting anyone have fun, but has he ever been with Theme Park? This is pretty common in places like Disney to let you go into attractions and rooms you've reservated. And safety reasons. Has he seriously never been to a theme park? I'm not gonna make you guys sit through that, but he spent most of that beating a dead horse about the name Isaac Indigo. He really needs to pad out his videos because they have no substance at all in them. Look at that Poppy Playtime ass floor. It's funny how he mentions Poppy Playtime when a recolored Poppy Playtime character is on screen as his depiction of himself. Ridiculous. <laughs> Guys, I kid you not, I had to speed this up to 16 times to get to a part where he actually reviews the game. 
The next area is probably the most visually striking in the game, a large fountain square with a strange clock tower and ferris wheel in the distance. It's pretty cool, but there's a lot of empty skybox visible, and it's fairly obvious that there's absolutely nothing beyond these buildings that we can see. The illusion that this is actually outside is completely broken, and as a result, this area feels more like a soundstage or movie set than an actual place. Please be serious here. It is not like they're gonna spend none of their non-funded budget on this game on background trees dude please focus on the center and what you're supposed to be focusing on instead of the background it just needed a lot more low resolution buildings and rides and stuff in the distance because it's obvious that behind this clock tower is just an endless void about as empty of a void as his video is. After exploring the area for a minute, we find an information kiosk at which Rambly gives us some extra info on the game's only collectibles, a series of plushies and other Indigo Park memorabilia scattered around the game's areas. Dude, it's almost as if an information kiosk in a theme park would only have information on things in the theme park. Crazy. <laughs> Indigo Park is made in Unreal Engine 5, and it's really pretty at times, though certain effects are obviously pretty janky. Yeah, the flashlight kind of looks like ass. The, the flashlight lumen shadows are janky. You can see them kind of wobbling and flickering around. I turned on all of the fancy features, and while the game looks really moody and atmospheric when lights aren't moving, the flashlight doesn't really work well with it. The Dude, he talks about lighting in a video game that's free, made by one rookie indie game developer in a span of one year with no funding besides anything coming out of his pocket isn't like perfection, like made by a whole whole team. He is ruthless with this review, man. <laughs> hey Theft, it looks like the watch you called useless earlier is having a purpose. <laughs> Earlier, Rambly asked us where we wanted to go first, implying that we had a choice. So where do you want to go? I don't know, dude. I just, yeah, I just got here, bro. We don't. We gotta go exactly where Rambly says, always. That's the name of the game. I don't know, man. As an indie game developer, wouldn't you want to have enough as possible to have content in your game, but leave enough to add more chapters later? You know, when you're more funded to make, I don't know, the game better? Huh, I don't know. However, upon encountering this barely hidden arcade machine, I suddenly found myself playing a 2.5D platformer minigame? Theft, I don't think that was supposed to be hidden. It's in plain view for you to see. Also, don't you think as a single game developer with I don't think anybody else helping you, it would be hard to make a whole entire minigame's worth of pixel art? <laughs> Like I said before, the whole game is kind of just walking into an area, having Rambly talk to you for a bit and tell you where to go next, and then repeat. We find ourselves in Molly's Landing Pad, which is a playpen highly reminiscent of Dog Days from Poppy Playtime Chapter 3, or the Daycare from FNAF Security Breach. Dude, all three of the places he just mentioned are places for kids to play in. It's almost like all three places are play places for children in a place for children. Whoa! This section presents itself as a puzzle, but it's really not. It's another fetch quest. Embedded in the walls are five colored blocks that can each be set to one of four symbols, and throughout the area we find paintings of shapes that correspond to the code. Again, it's not really a puzzle, it's just a slightly contrived justification to make you wander through this area and experience all of the scripted sequences. It's like static FNAF VHS tape, tunnel vision. Hello. Okay, green triangle. 
Dude, it's like neon white. This is sick. With that statement, he just totally contradicted his whole point. He just went on a tangent about how boring this section was and just called it sick. Green triangle, blue star. Remember, green triangle, blue star. Whoa, okay. Bitch, get out my way. I saw it. You're supposed to run away now. Thank you. Green triangle, blue star. Unfortunately, by this point, the game had all but telegraphed that I wasn't in any danger, and thus, I wasn't really scared. You're not scared, but in the last clip, you literally just screamed at a stationary, not even a real jump scare? Yeah, okay, this dude's talking out his ass. After solving the puzzle, we go through another loading zone before pressing a random button with no visible indication for what it does. Hmm, I don't know, Theft. Maybe go down the large hallway, the only other place things could be? I guess it opened that door, maybe. Yo. Do we win? How did you not realize the large, screaming, demented-looking bird was a sign to turn the other way and run? Are you dense? Is there something wrong with you? Or did all the indie horror slop that you spend your whole entire life sitting on your ass watching and making shitty commentary on? What, did that finish rotting your brain? Look at this junior's ass dead screen! That is one junior's ass that screen if I've ever seen one. Again, they're both indie horror games. Of course they're going to take inspiration. This is such a stupid review. We gotta hit the button, I forgot. That button must trigger a descriptive scene. Maybe it's because we hit it a million times, she got like super speed and that's the only reason she was able to catch us. No theft, I think you're just bad at games. Maybe you should go back to uh, doing nothing useful with your life. Because. As the leader of the FNAF community and the former top 5 greatest FNAF player in the world, I shouldn't have died to that. Theft, seriously? No, you are not the king of FNAF. That's Markiplier or Dalko or somebody else. Not you. Your channel is just indie horror slop reviews. This is... this is undeserving. Do not call yourself that again. I'll be on- I'ma be honest. There he goes, he figured it out! Good job, buddy! Your brain cell kicked in! Yeah, it's literally the dog day sequence from Poppy Playtime. It's literally the same thing. I criticized the dog day chase in Chapter 3 for being boring, so naturally this cheap knockoff is even more boring. Normally, in my videos, the chase sequence is like a free 30 to 60 seconds of watch time. I just let it play because it's exciting. Ah! However, as I edit this video, I realize that I have to cut this chase down because it's so boring, and I think that says a lot. Yeah, dude, this chase sequence is boring. I had to speed up your video in some points to 16 times because you were saying nothing of substance to review. And you know what? Maybe if you just stopped playing the same exact game, the exact same formula over and over again, and spent your life doing something better than playing indie horror trash, maybe things wouldn't be so boring for you. We got it, we got the secret. Okay, so I died because I saw her rounding the corner like a freaking school bus going one mile an hour, but she must have gone hyperspeed the moment I turned around because suddenly she was all up in my face. Then we find ourselves being chased through vents, just like Poppy Playtime Chapter 1. It's almost as if horror games are going to have chase sequences, and even better, if they're indie horror chase sequences, it's not like they're going to have an indie horror mascot character chasing you. Wow, he's stealing!
That was when it hit me. Despite Indigo Park being the definition of a shallow walking simulator that is in many ways even less original than Garden of Banban, I was still enjoying it, but only thanks to Rambly. Rambly carries this game. Without him and his great dialogue and acting, Indigo Park would be entirely forgettable. For all of Ban Ban's faults, the game at least has this unique, bizarre, liminal style to it, even if it is completely incoherent. Indigo Park's environments are generic. They're boring. He's seriously calling Garden of Ban Ban environments more visually and storytellingly appealing than Indigo Park's. Yeah, he's just trying to find any way to put this game down. There are some cool rooms and set pieces, but this doesn't really feel like an abandoned theme park. Like I said before, it feels <laughs> The game's developer, fellow YouTuber Unique Geese, is crowdfunding for Chapter 2 right now, and I think that's awesome, but they're going to have to do more for the follow-up game, and because Chapter 1 has zero gameplay with which to build on, it's not really clear what a more ambitious sequel would even look look like. I think it's pretty obvious what a sequel would look like. Obviously bigger and better and with, you know, more funding to make things actually have more quality and, you know, detail put into them. I don't think it's really that far off, Theft King. We're thoroughly teabagging Opila, we encounter another information kiosk which lets us hear the dialogue for the remaining secret items we found. The mask we found during the chase sequence reveals a secret audio tape with what is objectively the worst voice acting in the entire game. Whoa, where'd you find that? I've never seen anyone wearing one. Pretty snazzy. Ooh, looks like there's an audio recording tagged with costume in my database I've never noticed before. Let's listen, let's listen! Hey Jackson, you hear about the new mascots? <laughs> yeah, think it'll put us out of a job? I think so. Old, sport, and right after we got this damn raccoon costume. Man, screw this place. I said we get our asses out of here and go straight to Vegas. That was... Some voice acting. Dude, after Rambly's amazing voice acting, these guys are like, Hey, can you believe this? Mamma mia! It sounds like a joke. I've Yes, Theft. The voice acting is a joke. It's intended to be a joke. It's parroting the horrible voice acting of Day Shift at Freddy's. Since you're the so-called FNAF King, you should probably know about one of your most popular games is you know, most popular fan games, but apparently you're too blindsided by your hatred and rage for anybody having fun with anything to realize that. I've been critical of this game because that's what this is, a review, you know, a critique, and I think all of my criticisms are very fair. However, I liked Indigo Park. <laughs> Friend about us. Did I earn your trust at Indigo Park? Yup, that's how his review ends. A fade to black. Didn't even let the credits finish. Didn't even let you see the uh, end screen where it tells you to support the devs and explains everything. So, anyways. Coming from that horrible review, I hope this video helped you in some way digest that nonsense. And I would appreciate if you liked and subscribed and, you know, drop a like. That would be very cool. So, just like him, I'll end this video on a fade to black. Goodbye.